Good afternoon. We'd like to start the joint press conference between Kawasaki Heavy Industries, Iwatani Corporation, and Toyota Motor Corporation. I'd like to present, introduce to you the speakers. Uh, Mr. Hashimoto, Representative Director and CEO of Kawasaki Heavy Industries Limited. Mr. Hiroshi Majima, the President of Iwatani Corporation. And Mr. Koji Sato, Operating Officer, Incoming President of Toyota Motor Corporation. So these three will be addressing to you today. So uh, we would like to have uh, the presentation first from Sato-san, Mr. Sato, then from Mr. Hashimoto, and then from Mr. Majima, and open up for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, I'm Sato. Thank you very much for this opportunity today. For this season, we had been preparing a new attempt to participate with the hydrogen engine vehicle using liquid hydrogen. However, as we have announced a few days ago, we have encountered a problem during a test run, and the vehicle could not be recovered in time. Therefore, it will be absent from this race. For those who have been looking forward to see the hydrogen engine vehicle and also those uh, who have been worked with us together to prepare for this race, we'd like to use, uh, apologize. However, we will continue on the developments with our full power toward challenging the next Fuji 24 hours race. This is what we will be working with our full efforts. And if I can reflect on what kind of initiatives that we have been doing for this hydrogen engine, actually this is our third year in participating in the Super Taiku series with our hydrogen engines. Purposeful passion and action will achieve carbon neutrality. And if there's no options, let's make it ourselves. This is the philosophy that pushed us to continue training the hydrogen engine at the motorsports races. And from last year, we have introduced the vehicle that runs with carbon neutral fuel. So it will be a different vehicle, but it is another challenge that we are making in order to increase the options. And under these circumstances, as we have built up our experience with each race, we have been working on our collaboration with like-minded partners, and it has been progressing in producing, transporting, and using energy. This has been, this collaboration has been very important. And because it is important, we are seeing that there are more people coming uh, to partner with us. At the time that we entered in this race for the first time in May of 2021, we had eight partners, partner companies. That's where we started. And actually this number at the end of last year has increased to 30. And this time, as we have challenged using liquid hydrogen, the number of these partner companies has increased to 39 companies. And for the companies that are related to the parts for the hydrogen engines, but other, even other than that, the sustainability or carbon neutral part development has been progressed at these motorsports racing sites. And for the mass production vehicles, these developments will be contributing. So this kind of challenge has been taking place in a from a wide perspective. That is the position of this Super Taiku race series. And especially among that, we are going to be focusing our challenge to the liquid hydrogen area. And this will be a world's first challenge. Probably this will be the state of the art challenge, the first in the world that will be taking place at these mortar sports sites. And for to utilize the liquid hydrogen, uh, hy liquid hydrogen, the vehicle itself is important, as I've said earlier, but more than that, we have to think of the whole energy supply chain. And this is another point that we think is very important, especially for producing and transporting. We 
have been partnering with companies who have long experience with liquid hydrogen, like Kawasaki Heavy Industries and Iwatani Corporations. And thanks to the strong partnership, we have been able to, in a very short time, create a structure to allow up to the supply process. And with this hydrogen engine, in order to race in the motor sports, we have been able to identify the various issues and challenges thanks to our partners. So I think uh, we are de depending heavily on this strong partnership so that we and we want to take, continue to take on the challenge together. Especially, uh, President Hashimoto will be explaining from Kawasaki Heavy Industries after me, but uh, they have been involved in a project to produce lignite-derived hydrogen and gasify it in Australia. So they are starting uh, to be engaged in the producing process and up to the transportation using the liquid hydrogen carrier to the port of Kobe. So hydrogen supply chain is increasing its importance. And there, a strong technology capability has been contributed by Iwatani Sangyo, and also they have a strong passion. And thanks to their effort and passion, we are seeing progress in the utilization of liquid hydrogen. And for Iwatani Corporation, they have newly developed a mobile liquid hydrogen station. And for those who know about our initiatives last year, you know that the high pressure supply of hydrogen needed to take a large amount of space in order to do the filling. So we had a large size uh, filling station at the backside of the circuit. I think you remember that, but utilizing liquid hydrogen, they have challenged on developing the infrastructure side. And this time, if we were to have our liquid hydrogen vehicle, we were to use a very compact mobile liquid hydrogen station that can fit uh, within the pit area. So this infrastructure challenge is being promoted by our partners as well. The size would be four times smaller than the conventional station that was used for the gasified hydrogen. This kind of development is progressing as well on the infrastructure side. So in order to achieve hydrogen society, these comprehensive challenges are being identified by the collaboration between partners. And that here, motorsports have a big contribution and role to play. Unfortunately, we weren't able to enter our hydrogen engine Corolla, but these kinds of initiatives, these ac activities will continue and be enhanced toward the next Fuji 24-hour race. And in the meantime, by having these efforts made at the actual sites, we want to explore the various ways of climbing the market and looking at various options, including the challenge of securing energy uh, security. And also, we would want to receive the further understanding of the general public and also have good teamwork with the partners and have passion to put and our full effort in these initiatives. So that will be all for myself. Thank you. This is Hashimoto speaking from Kawasaki Heavy Industries, or KHI. First, it is an honor for us to be able to join in this race as a partner. I'm endeavoring uh, for a carbon neutral using hydrogen following uh, 22 and 21. It's a very big honor for us. We, uh, KHI, was invited by Toyota Motor Corporation in 2021. We have joined forces with Iwatani Corporation and J Powers to first I mean, offer and supply gas, gas, gaseous hydrogen air cargo from Australia uh, at Super Taiki Race. In 2022, uh, through a part partnership of six uh, partners, uh, including Toyota Motor Corporation. Uh, so we have made a demonstration of off-road uh, four-wheeler uh, using hydrogen uh, direct injection, injection engines engine at the Super Taiki race. So through uh, the race, uh, we were able to learn and we were able to I mean, uh, and make endeavor with passion and uh, determination. In this year's race, uh, Toyota Motor Corporation will be using liquid uh, hydrogen as the fuel of the racing car. So that's their end endeavor. We have had strong empathy on their passion. And we are going to supply uh, hydrogen uh, carried from Australia to Kobe uh, with our CISO Frontier our, uh, hydrogen uh, carrier, world's first uh, hydrogen carrier manufactured by KHI. 
This hydrogen is transported and produced by Hystra, an R&D association which we have established with Iwatani Corporation and J-Power. KGI has been doing hydrogen power generation a pilot project in Kobe from 2018. Last June, we were able to partner with Obayashi Corporation to do a power generation pilot using hydrogen imported from Australia. In this year's race, Toyota Motor Corporation will be using this hydrogen. Now we are able to stretch the use of uh, hydrogen at mobility in the field of mobility. So we are have uh, more options in the uh, supply chain use. Liquid, liquid hydrogen has high transportation efficiency, non-toxic, uh, odorless, and you do not need additional uh, energy like electricity in using. So you can take the imported liquid hydrogen, transport them in a tank lorry, transport them to race, and all you need to do then is uh, uh, charge the car as a clean fuel. So this type of usage would be leveraged in such large mobilities, large size mobilities like aircraft, a vessel, or truck, and it could be uh, leveraged on uh, power generation at plant, and it could be used at a hydrogen station. We are convinced uh, we have uh, many use of this te technology. Now, I'd like to talk about, make an update on our endeavor uh, for bringing hydrogen society into reality. The other day, uh, we have made a release with Iwatani Corporation and other partners uh, on Green Innovation uh, Fund, uh, which is intended uh, for commercialization of hydrogen supply chain by 2030. And we have uh, released that uh, the pilot project uh, will be conducted in Australia and also uh, the coastal area of Kawasaki City, uh, Kanagawa Prefecture. Through this pilot project, we are going to bring down the unit price of hydrogen to 30 yen per normal uh, cubic meter by 2030. And we want to demonstrate that, that we can do that. One of the most important part of the project is the supply of super large hydrogen carrier, which KHI will be taking up. This vessel ship uh, will have 128 times capacity of hydrogen uh, transportation compared with the current CISO frontier. This is going to significantly contribute to the cost reduction of hydrogen energy. In the future, for supply, we will be uh, partnering with uh, Iwatani Corporation, J Power, and Enels. And on the usage side, we will be partnering with uh, Toyota Motor Corporations and other uh, partners in the other field. We will continue with the endeavor uh, to bring carbon neutral society into reality. I would like to ask uh, for your continued support. Thank you very much for your attention. I am Majima from Iwatani Corporation. I'm here today as one of the like-minded partners in achieving carbon neutrality. And I would like to explain from the perspective of hydrogen supply the initiatives of our company. For Iwatani Corporation, from more than 80 years ago, we have been engaged in the hydrogen business. So our company covers from the hydrogen material procurement, manufacturing, transportation, and supply. So the whole process is developed in-house. And within the domestic market, the hydrogen share, we have been able to achieve 70%. Especially regarding liquid hydrogen, we are the only company in Japan that is engaged in commercial manufacturing and sales. At the Super Taiku race, our company is in charge of filling the liquid hydrogen to the hydrogen engine Corolla. Compared to the conventional vehicles, the vehicles using liquid hydrogen can carry more amount of hydrogen on each car. Therefore, the vehicle's cruising distance can be made longer. And we needed to develop a 
hydrogen station that can meet with this uh, enhanced cruising speed, a mobile liquid hydrogen station. The difficulty was balancing the improvement in the filling speed and to secure the safety and security for the filling operators. The liquid hydrogen is a liquid at ultra low temperature of minus 253 degrees. And at filling times, there will be heat transmi transmitted from outside of the pipe. And with that heat, it will cause the liquid hydrogen to evaporate. Our challenge was to reduce the evaporation amount and also to allow quick handling of the nozzles and hoses. And by this challenge, the filling time for the hydrogen engine Corolla we have been able to achieve one and a half minutes. This is the time of the actual hydrogen being supplied from the nozzle and hose. Even adding the peripheral and auxiliary operations, it has been kept at a level of three to five minutes. Also for the mobile liquid hydrogen station that has been developed this time, it is different to the conventional compressed hydrogen supply facility. There are no compressors or pre-coolers needed. Therefore, the required space has been able to be reduced four times more, and with its compact size, refilling can be done at the pit area. Going forward, we will further work on reducing the space and together with that work on improvement in safety and operational handling. The FCVs on the public roads today use compressed hydrogen. But we believe that in the near future, large size mobility in the cities like trucks, buses, construction machines, trains, airplanes, and ships and vessels will be able to provide uh, the fuel, uh, you'll be able to utilize uh, liquid hydrogen for that too, like fuel supply and power generation. So these will be the strong sources for liquid hydrogen construction consumption. We want to listen to the needs and requirements of our customers and utilize our knowledge and uh, expertise for further development. I hope that you will continue to hold a strong interest in liquid hydrogen. Thank you. We would like to open up for Q&A session. So we do have a time limitation. So uh, uh, one question per person, please. Uh, so I'm going to uh, pass on the microphone uh, if you uh, for asking question. Please raise your hand if you have any question. This is Watanabe speaking from Chunichi News. News. Thank you for the presentation. So I have a question uh, for Sato-san. So up until last year, so your initiative, I think you talked about, I mean, uh, you talked in uh, analogy of uh, climbing Mount Fuji, and uh, you said uh, we are at Gogome, halfway, halfway through the mountain. And uh, so it's uh, unfortunate uh, that uh, the hydrogen Kaloba cannot make a run uh, this race, uh, but how far will we be climbing the Mount, Mount Fuji uh, by the end of this year? Thank you for the question. Last year, we had uh, a high-pressure uh, hydrogen uh, engine technology. Uh, so we said uh, we are halfway through uh, Mount Fuji, uh, the fifth or sixth uh, milestone, Gogome. And uh, so it, this is about, I guess, uh, ice, internal combustion engine, burning hydrogen in the engine. And if we look at this uh, as a mass production vehicle, so uh, what is uh, the, I guess, uh, the progress of the technology in terms of, I mean, uh, leaching mass production? So uh, burning or combustion of hydrogen, I mean, uh, that part will not change with uh, the gas, gaseous or yeah, liquid uh, hydrogen. And we can uh, enhance the robustness of technology. So the combustion technology, uh, we can uh, climb higher uh, from the sixth milestone of the 10th milestone, Rokugome. But now uh, we need uh, to liquefy uh, the hydrogen and uh, transport that uh, to engine so that we can be uh, injected. So, I mean, we have to, I mean, uh, take 200, minus 253 degrees Celsius liquid to uh, gas and gasify that. Uh, here we need to uh, take a step back. We are not probably as high as uh, the fifth milestone of the 10. So we are less than halfway through. But if we uh, look back on the start of the project, we are halfway through climbing the mountain. So uh, can we see the goal by the end of this year? 
if that's the question. This is the world's first very techno technically difficult endeavor. So what's the, what we see now is not the only challenges we will be uh, uh, facing. I mean, uh, so we, it's a trial and error. We uh, do uh, for capture another uh, challenge, and then uh, we need to take care of those challenges. Uh, so you have maybe you're looking for a more clear answer on how much is our progress. But again, so we are, I mean, uh, in a due process of climbing. And that's what this initiative is about. And uh, in uh, the next uh, uh, 24 hours, a super taiku at Fuji Speedway, uh, after the race, I mean, maybe if you can ask us the question, maybe uh, I can uh, provide a, a better, uh, a, a crisp answer. Uh, thank you for not uh, completely answering to your question. Thank you. Thank you. Next person with question, please. Tanigawa-san, please. I'm impressed, Car Watch uh, Tanigawa. I want to ask a question to President Majima from Iwatani Corporation. So Iwatani, right now, you have the compressed gas hydrogen station being developed and deployed. This time, uh, Toyota built a liquid hydrogen uh, running vehicle. And I only know the rocket engines that use liquid hydrogen. But if there are more cars in the town with uh, liquid hydrogen usage, then do you think that in town there's going to be liquid hydrogen stations more? And what will be the change in the city's efficiency? Will it change? What kind of image should we have? if there are more liquid hydrogen vehicles running in the town. Thank you for your question. And talking about vehicles, I think it will be the larger size mobilities like trucks and buses that will be first introduced of these liquid hydrogen fuels. And other than that, what we are thinking about is that the next uh, International Expo, we're thinking about a 150 passenger uh, ship uh, using the liquid hydrogen. So th when we deploy this into larger size mobility, Liquid hydrogen has a, is a big keyword. And in the same way, currently, together with Toyota, we, are, we have a project in the state of California in the United States. And in these kinds of projects, we are focusing on liquid hydrogen to use it uh, to have the liquid hydrogen stations for large size mobilities. So this is becoming more mainstream. The scope of the and target of the vehicles uh, will be larger. And uh, for the filling speed, I think uh, there are many advantages with liquid hydrogen. And therefore, going forward, liquid hydrogen may, may become mainstream. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Uh, Hansan. Um, I have a basic question about the, uh, the your outlook for uh, hydrogen development, uh, Sato-san. When you uh, when you took over and you had your announcement in uh, last month about your new management, you were very um, focused on electrification, and uh, you seem to be uh, redoubling your focus on EVs. And by 2030, you expect to sell around uh, 3.5 million EVs. What is your strategy for um, hydrogen development in that period? It seems like uh, hydrogen is behind EVs. Why is it that the hydrogen is, is behind electric vehicles? And uh, what is your um, strategy for stepping up the development of hydrogen vehicles by 2030? What kind of volume do you think you'll have? And はい、えっと、質問させていただきます。基本的な えっと、その同じ時間軸、2030年までの水素の戦略、そして目標はどのようなものになるのか。あの、背景してますとやっぱり水素はどうしてもバッテリー
Thank you very much, Han san. First of all, I guess our key assumption, so the carbon neutrality, or I guess the carbon neutral future, as we perceive, is we need to, uh, to take into difference of uh, the needs and uh, situation around energy in uh, local communities, different regions, different local communities. So that's why we need to be able to offer wide range of options. So that's what we express as multi-pathway. So again, depending upon the specific needs of region or local communities, uh, we should be able uh, to solidly, I mean, uh, offer energy which is suitable uh, for their needs. So I mean, uh, hydrogen, uh, hyd hy hybrid, uh, plug-in hybrid, could be a transitional technology which could uh, fill in gap uh, between the current uh, technology and the future technology. So in that sense. So, I mean, uh, Akio san said, uh, we, are, we are making full fledged uh, effort on everything, on every technology. So, we are going to see possibility in all the options, technology options. So, that's our uh, basic thinking. And uh, so, uh, we talked about, yes, uh, the battery EV. So, that was part of a strategy that I've talked about, uh, that we talked about uh, uh, the other day, uh, as you have mentioned. It was just a part of our strategy. Now, so hydrogen. So what is uh, our ambition for uh, growing hydrogen? What is the size of hydrogen uh, business uh, in 2030? Uh, two points. One, we need to increase uh, the volume of usage. Now, this is very important. Of course, I mean, uh, so uh, the use in automotive industry, we have to uh, uh, set up a wider range of options in automotive industry, but we need to stretch the scope of industries uh, who are using uh, hydrogen. We need to engage as many uh, parties as possible in using hydrogen. So it's not just our automotive industry alone that we should that should be looking into the future of hydrogen technology. It should be a cross-industrial effort or vision. Now, so in order for us to increase the penetration of hydrogen in the society, so I mean the infrastructure is very critical. So you need to uh, produce and transport uh, the the supply chain, produce and transport. Unless we see evolution there, uh, we cannot uh, expect a volume increase of energy use. So again, so we need to uh, continue to establish the overall establishment for using hydrogen, hydrogen engine. And by 2021, so that was not even an option up until 2021. But now, I mean, you are starting to see that. Uh, so, I mean, you are asking question, uh, what is the volume expectation in 2030? So that represents, the question represents how fast uh, uh, we are making evolution with this technology. So we don't have a very specific business goal. At this point of time, we want to ensure uh, that hydrogen will stay as a varied uh, uh, option. And we want to have a comprehensive uh, effort uh, with as many uh, partners, as wide range of partners as uh, possible. And uh, we should focus on such, uh, I mean, day-to-day, -day, uh, I guess, effort uh, for the time being. Hashimoto-san, if you can, could please. Hydrogen. So this is a new energy using new technology. So I think that maybe people are, some people are skeptical about this new technology. Uh, right now, you are using LNG. So that's on, uh, that, that, uh, that was considered a mandatory a source of energy uh, to sustain our society. Uh, so when I first joined the company, uh, so, uh, we had, so uh, we have uh, constructed uh, the first uh, large-scale uh, li liquid uh, hydrogen uh, carrier. Do we need to liquefy hydrogen and for transportation? Who's going to use this very expensive vessel? Uh, so that's what we experienced uh, very in the very early days. But now, I mean, uh, looking into, I mean, having diversified range of options uh, for energy supply uh, for Japan, for Asia, and for uh, for world. Uh, so LNG is uh, something that we need uh, to use to sustain the energy needs. And in order for us to do that, we have to do that at large scale. I um, mean, have a large scale transportation. And uh, that brought the, the cost of the energy down. That uh, has led to substantial, enormous uh, penet increase in the uh, penetration. So hydrogen is uh, energy or substance which is uh, very, very difficult to handle. So, I mean, but hydrogen can be converted into electricity, or you can do a methanation, and you can uh, change to different gases, or like uh, Toyota-san uh, is, I mean, uh, uh, pushing forward uh, with the technology. So, using hydrogen as an alternative for gasoline, that's another option. 
It has very uh, good uh, combustion and efficiency, a very good response engine. So it, it's going to be a very high performance engine, which we can develop using hydrogen as a fuel. We, uh, KHI, uh, foresee a uh, potential of hydrogen. So, I mean, it's like LNG at the early days. People are skeptical about the LNG, uh, but now, I mean, uh, the same we can say for hydrogen. So, 40 uh, some years ago, LNG uh, was, people are skeptical, skeptical about LNG. So, same thing uh, for the carbon neutral and hydrogen. Uh, I believe hydrogen will be playing very big role uh, in achieving a carbon neutrality in the future. And this is going to really contribute uh, to, I mean, uh, the resolution of, of energy uh, uh, security issue and uh, carbon neutrality. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question, please. Shimashita-san, please. Thank you. I'm a freelancer. My name is Shimashita. I'd like to especially ask uh, to the uh, KHI and also Iwatani Corporation. So for the hydrogen engine, Toyota is going to identify challenges uh, and to clear them, go over those difficulties. It's for us easy to understand w what is uh, going to be Toyota's challenge. But for uh, KHI and also Iwatani, by engaging in these kind of motorsports companies, what were you able to gain as a company? What are you expecting to gain as companies? Well, for us, KHI, as uh, Mr. Sato has been mentioning, for hydrogen, even if we make strong efforts in the using side or only on the supply chain side, it won't be in a good circulation. We have to have the supply chain and also the users, the consumers, be in the same cycle. So in parallel, we have to both supply and use. And if that's not achieved, then even if we put a strong effort and create the supply chain, no one will buy it, no one will use it. But on the other side, even if Toyota creates a great uh, hydrogen engine, then the supply chain, if it's not in, uh, in time, then it will not be uh, used or uh, proliferated. So in that sense, for hydrogen, like uh, Mr. Sato mentioned, we want to have more, uh, as much as possible, like-minded partners. Like LNG, uh, if we have more partners, then there will be a lot of applications, and then there will be a lot of consuming sources, and then the infrastructure will be developed, and as a result, for example, for LNG case, by using natural gas, as many applications were created, and then the price got down and more people were able to use it. So when we think about creating a new supply chain, we have to have the uh, usage side. And for KHI, it's the Kawasaki uh, motor spikes, and uh, there are the uh, uh, the airplane side and uh, also the vessel. So we, we are for having a focus on the usage side. But also, the producing side is very necessary. So we're seeing that Toyota is making a big challenge and more and more partners coming in, this is now a momentum being created. So when the energy demand changes, when the new ages come, everyone talks about who is going to use it if we, if we create new energy. But people who lead these initiatives are the people who believe in that and the potential and people who have a strong passion and will. And this time, Toyota is taking that strong uh, will and passion to work in these endeavors. And for us, uh, if we are want to take leadership too. With leadership, only with leadership, times can change. If people uh, Change can happen. So, of course, wind, solar, BV, uh, there are various uh, types of uh, necessary uh, energy sources. But together with that, hydrogen for us is indispensable. It will be a future energy indispensable for us, too. And for it will, it will be something that is usable for people in the future, for everyone, too. So that is why uh, our hope is that we can work on the supply chain side as well to see this uh, big circulation created. For we, for us, we have more than 50 uh, hydrogen stations in Japan and supplying hydrogen to FCVs. But uh, when this uh, is expanded to the large size of mobility to bus and trucks, then uh, currently we're using the compressed hydrogen. The m issue here will be to have the safety and security and also to fill it at very quickly. And we are making uh, the improvements on our dispensers, our equipment, uh, to make these improvements. But this time, uh, liquid hydrogen, filling it into a car has been been a big topic for this challenge. So in that sense, having these like-minded partners and being one of those partners and uh, being in participating ourselves, I th we believe that uh, these uh, experiences can be applied to our other challenges too. Next question, please. Uh, Umeta-san from uh, TBS. 
This is Umeda speaking from TBS. I have a question for Sato-san. So uh, the the car, the, uh, in May, uh, you're going to throw in uh, the liquid hydrogen uh, racing car uh, into the race. So the first race is going to be 24 hours because so I think that's raising a bar uh, a little bit uh, uh, than, I mean, uh, joining a race from this race, which is much shorter in duration. And also, uh, the, I think uh, the, the fire uh, that you have experienced uh, with the hydrogen Corolla, I think there was an uh, uh, issue with uh, pipe, pipe, uh, piping. Uh, so uh, what sort of uh, uh, fix are you uh, putting on uh, the vehicle? First, uh, the, the, uh, the improvement. Uh, to uh, cope uh, with uh, the, the incident. So we had a joint uh, in the pipeline within the car. We need to have a stability there. Uh, so we do not, we had, should have a double or triple prevention of slackness uh, in uh, the joint and the pipeline. So we will be uh, installing that technology. So this is not, I mean, uh, the issue is not uh, inherent uh, to having a liquid hydrogen. So this could have happened uh, with uh, the gaseous uh, liquid. Uh, supply as well. So we need uh, to, yes, enhance the safety and uh, uh, security uh, features. So it was a very good learning for us uh, that now uh, we are much more focused on the safety technology. So the first race is going to be now the 24 hours uh, Super Taiku at uh, Fuji Speedway. Uh, how, what's our perception? Well, so when we did uh, the high pressure uh, uh, gas uh, hydrogen, the first race we have uh, uh, joined. I mean, uh, so Akio-san has uh, said, let's do this. And we spent four months. And we started off with uh, 24 hours uh, super taiku. So I'm just start, uh, sort of remembering that. It's a uh, destiny uh, to start new technology uh, with the 24 hours race. So I have a lot of uh, emotion. Uh, uh, I mean. Uh, facing uh, the upcoming uh, the Fuji uh, race. Now, it's the third year of this technology. So uh, we have a lot of know-hows and insight which is accumulated within ourselves. And uh, so uh, both uh, presidents of uh, KHI and Yotani Corporation, Mr. Hashimoto and Mr. Majima, they have very solid uh, technology. And uh, we are supported by very such strong so, so partner. So I'm sort of excited about all these challenges. And we should be strongly determined to walk on forward. So I guess that's my current thinking. Due to the time, uh, we'll keep the questions uh, to two uh, remain uh, two last questions. Next person. I'm Inajima from Bloomberg News. I have a question to President Sato, uh, Mr. Sato. For the construction of the hydrogen supply chain, I'm sure that you're going to need enormous amount of investment and also support uh, from each uh, national government has been announced, but the importance of partner companies is something that you have mentioned. So for the manufacturing of hydrogen infrastructure, building uh, for hydrogen for those projects, are there any plans for Toyota to make investments in those projects? And one more question. As a GR company president, you have always uh, been uh, going to the racing grounds uh, as the GR company president. But after you become the president and CEO of TMC, uh, what are your plans? Are you going to visit the motorsports ground racing grounds? Thank you. I received two questions from you. For the first questions about uh, the direct investment from Toyota to uh, construct and build up the hydrogen infrastructure, that was your first question. So basically, I think the, each individual company's strengths should be utilized and uh, should be worked with good teamwork. So for in, if we have uh, collaboration and partnership and uh, uh, have those opportunities, uh, we will be uh, considering uh, to uh, think of it within our partnership. But uh, it's not that uh, Toyota is going to take a lead in making proactively direct investments in those areas. And your second question, so uh, you, as you used to be GR president, uh, and uh, after becoming TMC president, are you going to come to the racing grounds? So having these uh, motorsports, uh, the positioning of motorsports, I think is changing for automobile companies. It is the site to make a development for the future technology and also to create the partnerships with like-minded partners. And actually, at the background of these races, each OEM communication has become very smooth. 
And so rather than having discussions in the meeting rooms, we're having these uh, frank environment and frankly speak, uh, more collaboration between the OEMs are being uh, created. Carbon neutrality is not something that Toyota alone can achieve. So at each individual company, there are various uh, challenges, initiatives being made, and these uh, in, uh, efforts uh, should be uh, supported by uh, everyone in the same industry. That's my understanding. So even after April, I don't think I will change my behavior. I think I'll stand, I continue to stand at the Gemba at the racing grounds and be a leader uh, to in these kinds of initiatives to make ever better cars. Thank you. Okay, next question. Question is going to be the last question. Anyone? Thank you very much. This is Take from Nikkan. So I uh, this is a question for Sato-san, the new president for TMC. So you have to gain understanding uh, from the society on your endeavor uh, for hydrogen technology. So uh, what is the level of understanding, required level of, uh, what is the uh, level of understanding on the society on hydrogen? So what is the misunderstanding? Who is misunderstanding the uh, technology? Uh, what sort of misunderstandings are there? Uh, how are you going to fix that? How are you going to communicate to uh, eradicate such misunderstanding? Uh, maybe this may not be a direct answer to your question. So hydrogen, so what type of energy is hydrogen? So what can you do using hydrogen? Or what is the benefit of using hydrogen? What is the dis disadvantage of using hydrogen? So under so we should see, we, we should, yes, have much better understanding of the society on hydrogen. So it's not, I mean, as somebody's particular misunderstanding that we want to change. Uh, we want uh, to disseminate uh, the idea of hydrogen as energy. Uh, so Iwatani-san, uh, KHI-san, they have been working with hydrogen for over long years. They understand the energy and the significance of hydrogen very well. And we are partnering with such a knowledgeable uh, company. And as we I mean, spend time with them, I mean, we come to know there's a lot more we, we need to learn about hydrogen. So we don't want any conflict. So we need to disseminate, disseminate the understanding of hydrogen as an energy uh, wider into society. Uh, could you comment uh, as well? Hashimoto-san, Majima-san, hydrogen like has, been, uh, has been used uh, for, to fuel rockets, for instance, uh, from uh, quite a long time ago. Like Sato-san has mentioned, I mean, people don't understand hydrogen yet. They don't know that it can be used as hydrogen. And there are some misunderstanding about the safety feature of hydrogen. So I think, yes, we need to be very meticulous, prudent uh, in communicating these points. And so we have to, uh, I mean, communicate uh, hydrogen as a very safe energy. And so that's the type of communication we would like to make to convince uh, people that this is some uh, hydrogen as an energy uh, that you can use very safely. Okay, so this is not just limited to hydrogen. I mean, a fuel uh, could be, I mean, hazardous depending upon the, you, the way you handle it. So like uh, uh, I mean, the two presidents has mentioned, I mean, we should understand many different aspects, perspective of hydrogen, and we are focused on such communication. For instance, uh, the next generation, uh, the, uh, for instance, we are uh, running hydrogen classroom uh, for students, for the future generations. So uh, people uh, so people can understand the, the hydrogen, hydrogen. And that's what we would like to continue to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are endeavoring very hard to bring hydrogen energy into reality. It's not just the VEV we are focused on. So please, I mean, uh, yes, uh, cover a to a Toyota Motor Corporation as a company also focused on hydrogen. Uh, so we'll be going into photo session. Uh, please uh, give us a minute or two while we are setting up uh, the venue uh, for photo session. Thank you.